Hi everybody, welcome back. My name's Claire. I'm going big. I'm so excited. I've got a huge canvas, uh, well, pretty big, um, 24 by 30 inches. I've picked out some amazing, amazing colours, really rich, warm, sort of pinks, purples, golds, orange sort of colours. And I'm going to do three straight pours on the canvas, tilt it out, see what I get. So I'm going big and I'm going bold. Um, so let me show you the colours I've chosen. So these are the colours that I've chosen. So two Pebeo Studio Acrylics colours, orange and iridescent violet blue. Two Royal and Langnickel colours, um, magenta and what's this one called? Co uh, dark Cobalt Violet. And then there's three Amsterdams. There is Ultramarine Violet Light, Persian Rose and White. Um, and there was one extra, which is this one, which is Montmartre Gold. Um, but it was in a massive tub and I just had to cut the tub up to get the paint out. So it's in the bin. It's really messy. Um, so for this pour, I've tried to pay attention to the transparency, um, wanting more opaque colours because I want the colours to stay the, the colours. I don't want them to blend as much. So I think get by using opaque colours, I could maybe more likely achieve that. So there's a box there that's totally filled in, which means that it's opaque. This one is opaque. The white is opaque. I don't know about these two. There's it just unless I've. Unless I haven't read something properly, it just doesn't, I can't find on there if it's tra if the transparency. So I'm that, that's a bit of a guess. And then these two, I think, are both opaque as well. Um, so I want opaque colours. So they're all mixed with PVA glue and water pouring medium. Um, I mix my pouring medium two parts PVA glue to one part water. And then I've mixed all these about 50-50. So about 50% water, uh, sorry, 50% pouring medium and 50% paint. Um, let me show you the consistency. It's quite thick. It's quite creamy, but it flows beautifully. If you have it too thick, it's just not going to flow nicely. Um, and if you have it too thin, the colours are just going to blend so much. You can see it leaves a trace. They're all about the same. The iridescent, the orange feels a bit thicker at the moment, but they're all about the same consistency. So if they're feeling a little bit thick, I'll add a little bit of water. If it feels a bit thin, I'll just add a little bit more paint. That feels a bit thick. This is always a thick one. Yeah, can you see it's just not flowing as well? It's going, it's coming off in lumps. I'm going to add a little bit more water to that. I think that just needs thinning down. I'm going to layer up three plastic cups. Um, one thing just to bear in mind is that purple can massively take over a painting um, for some reason. Um, so when I put my purple layers in, I'm going to use less purple. Um, so I think this is the order I'm going to go with. However, I don't want the purple in the centre. So what I might do, I quite like white in the centre. So if I shuffle it all round, so I've got the same order. The canvas I'm using is 24 by 30 inches, so it's pretty, pretty big. So I'm quite nervous, not nervous of the pouring, but just nervous of wasting so much paint because to have three pints of paint, it's a lot of paint. Um, so I'm going to, I was originally going to do ring pours. I'm going to do straight pours. And the reason for that is these cups, I'm going to find it very difficult to ring pour. I think, I think that's my plan, straight pour. Um, I'm going to find it difficult because they're plastic. I can't bend them. There's no funnel. Um, so I think what I'd like to do is, I was just thinking about putting a little puddle down. I'm just going to make a little puddle for my first pour. I'm going to do it. I'm probably going to do one, two, three. So let's just make a little puddle. So I've just, I'm just using some of the leftover paint. So this won't show because 
the when I pour the the cup out it will go over the top of this but it would just give it it would just wet the canvas and just help it to flow more easily I think um, that's quite thick so I'll just spread that out oh there's something in it right so to pour this out I'm going to pour from where I poured the paint in so as I said I think I think I'm going to straight pour sometimes things change when I get going um, and if I do straight pour I know I want to go and keep the paint the cup close to the canvas Wow, look at those colours. Right, see the difference? So that pink there at the edge was the was my puddle originally. Now can you see that the colours have pushed against that pink so every single colour remains? Whereas this side, it's it's gone. So actually the colours have rolled over on themselves. So I've this edge bit here is equivalent to this. I think it's this pink pink in here so it just means that the colors have gone under so i've lost a bit of the color which is fine but i that just shows me i think i'd like to put a bigger puddle down so that i can actually retain more of it so it will as i stretch it out i'll have more more options so i think i'm just going to very quickly mix up some flow extender right i've mixed up a massive massive pink the only reason i'm using pink is because well, it's one of these colors but also it's um one of my cheaper paints i'm just going to put a little bit around there just to give that something to push against just so it doesn't roll over on itself anymore right so the next one i'm going to turn this round just so I get a bit of a different angle as I'm pouring out just so that they don't all look the same although they, they won't anyway they'll all look completely different so I'm going to do exactly the same again and then these will meet Right, they haven't met, so I'm actually going to have quite a big pink um, section. That's okay, well I can't do anything about it now. Um, I think that it was flowing around this way. So the alternative is that you just cover your whole canvas. I'm going to do my last one here. That you just cover the whole canvas in flow extender. Maybe that's what I should have done. Right, last but not least, I'm probably going to have to pick this canvas up because it's going to tilt off the edge if I'm um, not careful. Right, really good. It hasn't gone off over the edge. Just going to tilt it this way a little bit. And then I'm going to just spread some flow extender all around the edge. So the whole canvas is covered just to try and get the most from these puddles. Purple is definitely dominating. I said it would. Oh well. So I'm just going to give it a really good torch. There's lots of air bubbles.
Right, how on earth am I going to get this tilted out? Um, I feel that corner is closest, the weight of the paint. I, I just feel like I should maybe go over towards that corner first. So then it's got less to travel. Yeah, I think it just makes sense to get that, that covered. So I'm just going to really take my time. So I guess one question is, do I go off over the edge now? I've gone off slightly there, I think. Or do I just stretch it as much as I can? It's very, very heavy. So there's a lot of paint on here. So I'm going to need to tilt quite a lot off. But that's fine. It's a big canvas. There's a long way for it all to stretch. I don't know if you can see the frame twisting as I'm doing this. It just shows how heavy this is. Right, that is the entire canvas covered. Now, what do I want to do? So I can leave it exactly like this or I can tilt some more off. There's lots of paint on here. The problem I have, well, it's not really a problem, but if I tilt, I'm not sure which bit to tilt because I, there's no bit that I'm not, not happy with. I'm actually really happy with all of this. Normally there's a there's a bit that's a bit more boring or muddied or but I'm actually loving it all. My favorite bit is this insane lacing through here. It's absolutely beautiful. Now what I'm really happy with is I've got all three cups still. So one's there, one's here and one's here. So I, I wanted to keep the three and so you can see the borders between them which is this dark purple and this the pink line I love how it's all kind of wavy you haven't got where they haven't got a central point where they meet perfectly it's almost twisted around slightly and I love that I think my favorite thing actually two favorite things my favorite things of this painting first of all are the colors dark pink and dark purple and orange just wow gorgeous colors the second thing is the composition um it's divided into three this canvas so the top cup this cup here and then this one but not regularly I, i'm so glad i haven't got two big parts and a small part so it's not so they're relatively even but they're totally irregular in shape um, and i just think composition wise that works so so well i'm loving this solid bright orange in the center of each of them um i'm loving this oh there's just so much i just i'm loving this little white section here the lacing here so let me show you up close um the details are just gorgeous look at all the overlapping colors Here's that white section with some massive, massive purple cells in. Um, that, I think, was the very centre of one of the cups. And can you see all the shimmer? The whole thing is shimmery because of the gold and the um, orange. Ah, oh, the pink is lost, isn't it? That um, iridescent pink, that's definitely lost. So I mentioned that the two colours that I weren't, wasn't sure about the transparency were the purple and the dark pink, and they have dominated massively. So I think it would be fair to say that they are uh, opaque colours, doesn't they? are not transparent. Wow. And just look at, look at this effect here. I mean, just it's so, it's just so organic, so bizarre. All these just beautiful, beautiful folds of paint. This bit here looks a bit transparent where you've got different layers it's a little bit pastely I think the pale pink is shining through there 
And then what looks like the sort of simpler bits, look at all the lines. You think uh, uh, standing back, it just looks like a block of colour there, but it's not. It's alternating purple and gold lines. And again, some more beautiful lacing there with some shimmery gold over the top. Oh, did I show you the lacing bit here? I can't remember. Look at that. That's my favourite bit. It's just so somehow so delicate. I am pretty excited about this. Um, so I'll be back when it's dry. So it's now dry. It's taken ages to dry because the paint was so thick. But the amazing news is there is no cracking. It has it's dried slowly, but it's dried really, really well. The colourfuls are just, the colours are just so powerful. Um, that white and orange, it just seems to glow. And then you've just got the really, really dark pink and purple. Um, almost accentuates the brightness. Um, let me show you up close. Um, there's just some really striking sections. So very, very deep dark here, but then it goes much paler and almost pastely here with some really pretty um, little effects. Um, I think that's what I like so much about this painting. Yet again, there you've got really dark and bold, but then if you come over this way, it goes all quite transparent um and then here this and um, this this incredible lacing oh sorry didn't mean it to jump it's just so interesting so pretty i love straight pores because you just never really know what you're going to get and obviously this is three straight pores and they all look totally different it looks a bit like lava there i think and then I really, really like this, this little odd white section here. I just think it balances really well with the whole composition. And again, a bit more lacing there. Um, so, oh, and also the edges, the edges, I just love the way the straight pores just fall over the edges of the canvas. So you've got this really thick, Thick, dense, opaque paint. It's just I love I love that about straight pores. Um, so what? Let me know what you think. Uh, I think it does almost look a bit fiery. The orange I think in the centre looks quite fiery. Um, let me know what you think. Uh, thank you so much for watching uh, for taking the time to watch this video. If you like it, please do hit the thumbs up button. Um, and if you have any thoughts, any comments, um, any ideas of what to do next. Um, let me know. Thanks for watching. Bye.